So now we're going to do page three and four. So today we're measuring the tallest tree in the park is 120 feet from the tree. Okay, so first we're going to sketch in our tree here. Really nice, tall tree. And he's standing 120 feet from the tree. He is, and in his hand, holding it up to his eye, his leveling device is 5.5. This is angled by sorry, 5.5 feet up. The angle to the top of the tree remember, this is 5.5 feet right here. So we're going to find the x value. This was 47 degrees. Okay, so we have tangent because we're looking for opposite and we have, are given adjacent. Remember that what we find, we have to add 5.5 to in order to get the full height of the tree. Alright, so we know that the tangent of 47 degrees is x over 120. So if I multiply both sides by 120, I get x. But x is not my answer. 120, sorry, tan 47 is 128.68. But I have to add 5.5 to that to get my answer. So when I do that, I get 134.18, which is one, one decimal, 134.2 feet. Alright, now we're looking at vectors. Alright, remember that the x and cosine go together, y and sine go together. So, this point right here, the vector, is going to be the magnitude, which is 36, times the cosine of 32. And the y value is 36 sine 32. Vectors have these weird, these weird angle brackets. Okay, so, 36 cosine 32 is a oh, whole number, so we're rounding it, so that's going to be 31. It comes out to be 30.53, so we're rounding it to 3.1. Sorry, no, we're not rounding it to 1. Okay, that's one of the weird little screws here. Rounding it to 31, and I put in 36 sine 32, and I get a rounded to 19. So that would be my answer. Okay, magnitude and direction. Magnitude, remember, is the length of the hypotenuse. So that's that length right there. And we do that by finding your using your Pythagorean theorem. So the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared, the square of the two legs. Well, that's the square root of 36 plus, well, I'll get that backwards, 64, which is the square root of 100, which is 10. So that's your magnitude. Your angle, okay, I'm going to need, I've got opposite and adjacent, so I need to use tangent. Tan uh, inverse of 8 over 6. Always inverse if you're looking for an angle. Alright, we plug that into our calculator, and that should give us that angle. And we get 53.13. We'll just round that to 53. But that's this angle down below the line, and I need this because I need the degrees west of north. 
So theta ends up 90 minus 53. Whoops. All right, 90 minus 53, which is 27. No, it's 37. So it's 37 degrees west west of north. All right, the resultant vector means I'm adding these two together. So I find the endpoints, which give me the vector for each of these two vectors. And then I add the x's and add the y's. It's that easy. So this one is negative 3, 3. This one is 4, 4. So we add those together. We have negative 3 plus 4 and 3 plus 4. So that leaves us with 1 and 7. And that's our answer. Okay, so now we have some of these translations and stuff, transformations. So we're going to take the, on the test, all it's going to do is look, is give you a couple of the points. So you just need to do enough to be able to eliminate and identify which ones are the correct ones. So you may not have to do all four points. I'll go ahead and do all four just so you get the hang of how to do this. Sorry, I'm Chris. I've been doing this all morning. X equals negative 2. A is 4 units away, so I have to go another 4 this way. So A prime is negative 6. My Y value is going to stay the same. B prime is 2 units, so I have to go another 2, so that's negative 4 in the X, but Y was negative 2. C prime has the same x value as A did, so minus 6, and it keeps its minus um, 5 y value. D prime is actually 8 away, 6 to get to the axis, and then another 2, so 8. So it needs to be 8 this way, which makes it negative 10, keeping a negative 1 for the y. All right, that's the first one. Next one, translate. We are adding and subtracting a value to each coordinate. So A is 2, 0. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And 0 plus 6 is 6. B prime... B is 0, negative 2, so 0 minus 4 is minus 4. Negative 2 plus 6 is 4. C prime is, C is at 2, so it's just like on A, so when I subtract 4, I get negative 2. Saying one thing and writing another, it's driving me crazy. Negative 2. The y value, though, we have was negative 5, so add 6, it's going to be 1. All right, d prime, the 6 minus 4 is 2, the minus 1 plus 6 is 5. There we go. Okay. Dilation centered at 0, 0. I'm going to multiply all coordinates by 3 halves. So, A prime is 
Well, the zeros get to stay zero, because even by dilating them by three halves, they stay zero. So the twos cross off, so A ends up to be zero. So A prime. B prime starts with a zero and then has a negative two. So this is going to be three halves times negative two. Twos cross off, that leaves me with zero, negative three. Negative has to come along. C prime started out at 2, so I have 3 over 2 times 2, and instead of negative 5, so 3 over 2 times negative 5. The 2's cross off, so I have 3. The second one is a little more challenging. 3 times 5 is negative 15 over 2, which is also negative 7.5. So just depends on what it offers you for your answer. D prime is 6, so 3 over 2 times 6, and 3 over 2 times negative 1. So the 2's cross off out on the first one, I get 3 times 3, or 9. And we just turn the negative, the 3 halves negative. All right, one more. Reflection across the y equal x line. This is basically a inverse. So all we're doing is saying y is equal to x, x is equal to y. So we switch their positions. So a was at 2, 0, so now it's 0, 2. b prime, b was at 2, 0. No, I did it. 0 and negative 2, so it's negative 2, 0. C prime is 2, negative 5, so it's negative 5, 2. And D prime is, sorry, it was at 6, negative 1, so it's negative 1, 6. There we go. And that's, that one page is done. We have one more page, and then we're going to move to a different video. Okay, which figure shows line symmetry? Line symmetry means if you take a line from the point through the center and go the exact same distance out, you'll hit another point on the figure. So this one definitely has line symmetry, as does this one. Okay. The only one that does not is F. It doesn't have any symmetry. Not rotate. Oh, it does have reflect reflective. That would be reflective. But it definitely does not have point symmetry. So let's just be a number F. Another number. All right. Does this figure have rotational symmetry? No. Even if I rotate it 180, I'm still going to get... Now it's upside down, so it's not the same. Alright, so this answer is just no. Alright, 27. Does What types does this have? Well, first, it's got rotational. It's pretty obvious it's got rotational. Uh, it's also got point. Alright, same with the outer lines. Okay, so that's point. But it also has line symmetry. If I draw a line through it, Right through the middle, it's going to have line symmetry. So it has all three types of symmetry. How many lines can I draw here? Well, through ver opposite vertices. So I'm going to have four of those, four lines. But I can also bisect the, the edges. So that's going to give me an additional 
four lines. So I've got eight lines all together. Alright. Now we're doing the area. So we have to draw triangles to find the area of the to find the apothem. Remember our equation is one half a perimeter times apothem. So remember this distance right here is your apothem. But I'm also going to need to know the side length to find perimeter. Well, this is a square. Okay, which means I've got an isosceles that I'm given. This one is 8. So I know I have a 45-45 because take 360 divided by 4 because there's 4 faces. It gives me 60. You divide that in half when you drop the perpendicular, so that's a 30. It's not 45, it's a 30. No, I'm sorry. Four spaces, 360 divided by four is 90 degrees. Half of 90 is 45. It is a 45, 45. Which means these two sides are the same length, and this one is eight. So that means this eight is equal to x root two divided by root two. Rationalize it, and I'm gonna get 4 root 2 is my x value. So the side length is 8 root 2. So I take that and multiply it by 4. And that is my perimeter. So 32 root 2. The apothem is the original 4 root 2. So that's 4 root 2. Well, notice I have two root twos. Those two multiply together to give me just two. So one half and two go to one. So those cancel each other out. I've got 32 times four, which is 128 millimeters squared. There we go. Okay, number 30. So we've got all right. So we've got um, just trying to figure out the pages. I'm sorry. This is a trapezoid. Trapezoid has its sorry. That's an R. Trapezoid has its own formula. It's one half area of the uh, sorry one half some of the bases times the height. So these are my bases. So I have one half, eight plus four. Well, that's 12. And then times the height, which is four. Well, one half of four is two. Two times 12 is 24. So the area is 24 inches squared. Okay. Sorry. Find the area of the regular polygon and round to the nearest tenth. So, I've got another triangle I've got to drop, and this is a six foot hypotenuse. This is a hexagon. 36 divided by 6 is 60. Half of that, therefore, this is 30. Well, that makes this whole thing a 30, 60, 90. That's six foot, that's three foot, because we know our side ratios are one, two, and root three. So this one's going to be three root three. So our area, remember, is one half perimeter times the apothem. Perimeter is going to be, each side length is six. If this little half side is three, the whole distance is six. So that is six feet. 6 times 6 is 36 for my perimeter. My apothem is the 3 root 
three. Okay, so I'm gonna, let me put a little time for it. I'm sorry. Half of 36 is 18. So I do 18, 3 root 3. And I get 93.5, and this is going to be feet squared. Okay, and our last little bit is a ratio. The ratio of sides is sorry, 2 to 3, but area means I have to square that number. So it's 4 over 9. Okay, I believe I'm done with that set.